We're recording. Greetings, folks. So welcome to, you know, interesting question. Are we going to name this thing round or are we going to name it Secrets That Only Wives Should Know? That's the name of the program. Secrets That Only Wives Should Know. We're going to discuss marriage, a relationship that God put together. Before we get to the program, I want to welcome Miss Kimberly, my co-host, uh, my troublemaker. Hey. You know, hey. <laughs> always. Always great okay. topics okay. and great understanding. And then behind the scenes is Miss Lisa, she's the control person. She's the she's the um, the police. She gets everything safe. Yes. safe and yes. Go to <laughs> we appreciate that. This is the first meeting we're gonna go semi-public. We've been having private meetings to try to get things laid out. We're still not sure if we're gonna use Zoom to do our meetings, but we are gonna we have invited some people on my website on my Facebook page to join us. We're sick of do it. We only gave them 10 minute notice. Uh, we're not sure how we're gonna do this. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna, uh, 10 minute notice is enough time, right? <laughs> if you if you haven't noticed, we also are designing a book. We have a book coming out on the topic, Secrets Only Wives Should Know. It's a book about romance. It's a book about marital relationships. It is for grown people. If you're not a grown person, it will not be for you. If you want to pretend like God don't, don't like sex, it's not for you. If you're going to pretend like Christians don't have sex, it is not for you. If you don't think sex is exciting and great, it is not for you. Uh, so if you if you understand that sex was a gift from God, and we should enjoy it, then this is a book for you. If you think that it should be practiced and perfected, it's a book for you. Uh, romance is a dance. Romance is the, 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 the structure that God put together for men and women to get along. If it wasn't for sex, we would kill each other a long time ago. <laughs> but we don't. The name of the book is called Secrets That Only Wives Should Know. It will be out right before Valentine's Day. And it'd be a good chance for, for a gift, to something you can read on your own and, and enjoy on your own and practice on your own. Uh, it was inspired by all of the experience I've had in life, which is about that short, not a whole lot of experience. But I, I think that every man is an expert on women and every woman is an expert on man. So, um, Ms. Kimberly, I understand you got one yes. or two questions for me. Anything you want to say before we get started? Uh, how is everyone? I'm perfect. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, how's everyone? I can hear Love you. Love is in the air. Is Lisa it's there? time for gift giving. Happen. Look, sister, I've seen your hump, your husband, I've seen your home, I've seen your rings, I've seen your cars, I've seen <laughs> I know Brother Man is a gift giver. <laughs> it ain't no season in the in the Genesis home. <laughs> it's a gift giving season. You kidding me? <laughs> we gotta have him yes, on the Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. It's time to give. It's time to give. <laughs> How are again. you? Lisa? Time it's to good. give again. Good. So I, am I understand, good. Kimberly, you have a list of questions for me. The, 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 the program yes, is good yes, I have a list of questions. So go ahead. Straight from Sam. So we have a list of questions. Yes, yes. How to make your marriage infidelity proof? Is that even possible? Well, Ooh, that's a good question. Well, there's a couple of ways to approach that, that question. Uh, there's a couple of really guaranteed ways. Uh, surgery, for instance. <laughs> <laughs> Explain. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Surgery would be for the man. <laughs> <laughs> for the man. <laughs> no, no, you can you can get surgery too, but <laughs> what a waste. <laughs> that's that's one way. Oh, that's a um, good question. You can have that's a good can, question. Uh tiredness, make sure you will you will out. But also work. Guilt, but the real the real dude is I, I know that the question is aimed at men because we all know women are perfect okay. and never stray. We all know that, and men tend to stray with their eyes and mind and sometimes their bodies. And here's the deal with men: we don't think having sex is a big deal. We think it's the only deal. So if <laughs> if, if if a relationship there, I mean, there's nothing. Else. There is nothing else. There is nothing else for a man. You know, women think that men think of sex all the time. That's not true. Men think of sex 
all the time we think of you. Oh. So if, in fact, but if but sometimes, you know, the, 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 the woman sometimes is so busy, she got kids to deal with, she got work to deal with, she got things to do that we don't do, we don't do. And so you, you're always rushing around. And sometimes when you pass your husband in the hallway, he reached up to touch you because we like to touch. Wow. So he reached up to touch you and you think he wants to stop you for some attention. So you brush him away. I got to go take care of the kids. I got to go get dinner ready. I got to do the wash right now. I got to go to the store. And you push him away and you push him away. And he he thinks that maybe you don't like sex, or at least not as much. It's a bother to you. And sometimes when you're having sex, you give him a time limit. You got two minutes. Sometimes it's just, you got so much to do that you push him away. Now, his feeling doesn't get hurt, but his ego does. And if, if he loves you, something is being in general. That's good. It's men in general. If if you if, if he loves you and care for you, but he thinks you don't want to have sex, but he has a he has sex drive. Women have sexual desires. Men have sexual drives. It drives us. That's why we work. Look look around your home. Everything you see in your home was made by a man to please a nagging woman. Okay, you you want the walls painted? <laughs> we didn't want the walls painted. We didn't care about the carpet on the floor. Dirt would do for us. So indoor plumbing. What's that? Indoor plumbing. That's a woman trying to get tired of going out of the creek, you know. So we do that for you. We do that for you. Uh, but if we think that you don't want sex, and we do, it's a need for us. So we may actually go down the street to relieve ourselves of the little girl down the street. And so when you catch us, what do we do? We say, "Honey, she meant nothing to me," because honey, she really did mean nothing to him. But as a woman, uh -huh. you. You have to be emotionally involved with a man to let him on top of you. You're not going to do it for fun or pressure. In most cases, you're going to do it because you're emotionally involved. So you think that man must be emotionally involved with that woman. He's telling you, she meant nothing to me. It just is your lease. I mean, so what you got to do, ladies, make this quick. You got to convince that man that his sex gives you energy, gives you strength, makes you healthy. It is your medicine. It is your medicine. It provides you with clarity. It, you get, you gotta, it, it, it makes you who you are. So if he loves you, he only works if he loves you. If he loves you, he will not take your medicine down the street someplace. He won't take your energy down the street someplace. So that kind of keeps it going. But what keeps a man from, from swaying it used to be uncle and grandpa and brother. But now it's got to be you. Tough job, ladies. Good luck to you. Wow, that's pretty good. That that was one to grow on. We have to go back over that one. That was really, that was a lot to digest. A different perspective. Feelings versus uh, ego. Uh, yeah, that's ego, really ego of man is dangerous. We, we go to war over ego. Oh. We go to war. We will fight a battle over our ego. Oh, that's good. Most you know, men, most huh? men have very strong egos. Hey, Ms. Wanda. Hi, gorgeous. I'm good. Most men have real strong egos. Yeah, that's Define true. ego. Define ego? Define ego. You're asking me or asking Wanda? You, Mason. Ego is, is the pride of the man. It, I mean, ego is what gets us to, you know, our muscles are stronger than your muscles. It, it, ego makes us want a bigger home. Ego tells us to make, have a prettier wife. Ego, ego is a driving force of jealousy and of dominance. Uh, it, ego will motivate a guy to do things he cannot normally do, what I normally do. A guy will take something in private, he will not take it in front of his wife. I, I know a gentleman, Ann Wade. He'll do what? Uh, huh? You say he'll do what? He'll take what? He will take something off another man in private that he would not take off of in front of his wife. If gotcha. you insult the man in front of his wife, I don't care how big you are, you're gonna deal with something. But by yourself, you let it go. Okay. I, I know it's, 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 would you could... and with Diamond, because it, it's, it's up, like his, his boss told him that I didn't think you can do it anyway. And he said, had he said that outside walking to the car, he would let it go. He's gonna quit. But because he said it in his kitchen in front of his wife, because he said, you're not good enough to do this business. He said in front of his wife and he went to the top. He went triple diamond. 
he became a millionaire because of the, the ego. He was going to say in front of my wife, I'm not as good as you. That's what it is. So ego is ego is comp competitive? Yep. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. It is very competitive. That's, that's good. I mean, that's good. I, was, I, I was trying up a little league as a kid. I didn't really care about baseball. I was pretty good at baseball, but I didn't care about it. I wanted to be on the team with my friends. And the coach did not pick me for the team. He picked all my friends on the same team. I could not play on that team. I was a pretty good player. I was, I was mediocre during the season until I played that team. When I played that team, I played them three times. I stole home base. I mean, it was just on. It was on. I'm going to make this dude regret not having me on that team. Ego. That's okay. good. That's good, Mason. By the, um, way, the next by question way, ladies, is... By the way, ladies, you can use that ego with your husband. If you know how to use the ego, you get most anything that you want to get from your husband. Uh, okay. You, well, yeah, give us a no, top no, five. I believe you, the girls. <laughs> you so fine. Can't believe you so fine. Right <laughs> <laughs> no, because all you got to do, all you gotta, <laughs> all you gotta do is to, to, to convince Master, Mister, that he is, he is the baddest, the toughest, the roughest, whatever you want to put in there, and you get more of it. You get what you praise. You get what you praise. Wow, you don't, oh, that's good. You don't have to oh, tell me what you don't like. You got to tell me you don't like. Tell me what you do like. Because you, whatever you feed grows. If you feed the things, okay. You so like, what? So we always want to do positive affirmations. You have to do what? Based positive affirmations, like Everything whenever he does. Ooh, that would you did that so good. Can't you nobody up. do. Everything you want more of. You know, okay. uh, somebody asked my wife backstage once, how do you get your husband to buy you all that nice stuff? And she said, easy. Just make sure he likes the way you say thank you. We work with mm. that. Oh, well, that's good. We work I like that. Guy. That's Brenda. She, she was the best manipulator in the world. <laughs> I, I would have to salute her. Girl, that was good. Let me get that for you real quick. Hold on, that was good though. <laughs> Oh wow, that's good, man. That's, yeah, that's real good. That's tasty. Mm -hmm. Okay, our next question is: Can you speak to insecurities in a marriage as as they relate to infidelity? Um, oh. Women like the lights off, whereas men like the lights on. And yeah. this is when nobody paid their bill. No, All not the them. lights out. Not then. Uh, last <laughs> month, women are very, they, they show off their body. They always show their bodies off. I believe firmly that women would go around naked if it was legal. They want to be seen. <laughs> however, 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 they don't like their bodies. They don't like their bodies. They don't like their bodies. So they're always insecure. They always worry about this, this pimple, this scratch. This, and this, so they're very insecure, but they, they love the attention the body gives them. So what they would do is, is end up, you know, sitting around thinking about things that don't really help them. So the insecurities comes in when they have um, a man they like, but they don't think they like him. The man, on the other hand, the man is always insecure with his woman because a man tends to on purpose pick a woman that he does not deserve. He knows he doesn't deserve her. He knows he's better. She, he's hoping, he's afraid one day she's gonna wake up and say, what am I doing with him? He's parasitic, really. Because we know, we pick we pick as high up on the tree we can reach. <laughs> you know, you know mm -hmm. I, 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 I ego, I wanna take you out to show you off. I, I, want, I want men to envy me. So you, you want the best, out, you, don't, you, don't, you don't deserve her. You can't give her enough to make her, make her think she's okay. But that insecurity would also make him jealous. He knows that he doesn't deserve you. He thinks that somebody else may know that also and go after you. And he's insecure on that part. On your part, as you get older, as you age, your body, your strength, your, your power that you think starts fading. You're going to fade. I, I know that uh, Kim is, is only 25 years old. He ain't start fading yet. Uh, I know Lisa is, is probably 15. And, and her husband is a child molester. Yeah, he took that little girl. He took that little girl. <laughs> <laughs> but when you get older, as you get older, as you get older, 
it, it won't last. It won't, your beauty will not last. And you have to have a position in your marriage that's stronger than your body. Your body is going to change. It cannot be your sole source of power over your man. And after years go by, it's going to be how you raise his kids, the things you did together, your family you now have, your grandkids. Uh, it's going to end up being that. But eventually, ladies, eventually, it's going to be just you and that man. It's going to be just you and that man living your life in old age somewhere. And you won't be around your boss, your job, your cars, your income, your business, your Aunt Mary, your Uncle Joe, your girlfriend on the street. It's going to be you and that dude living together. And it better be more in your body. Wow, that's that's deep. That's good. That's real good. Wow. That's you got to chew on that one. Mm -hmm. No, I mean gather things How together so that you'll be able to grow old together. When the wrinkles come and the sagging comes and and, and the tiredness comes, when you you can't rely on sex to keep you going, you have to have things in your life that you sit back both and admire. Look what we did. Well, we got five grandkids now. Look at these kids. You know, and you walk hand in hand and you got to help off, of, off her seat now because you can't even get up. And she's old, oh, she's tired. You're older and tired her. And you got to, and, and that love comes in because it's just, you know, you just got her. She just, just got him. And that's why I'm saying sex should be not just fun, but also playful. That, that's your last, that, that is the only desire. That's the only source of pleasure a man has. It is the only source wow. of pleasure. The, the only source of pleasure. You're the only creature we would instinctively die for. We give our life for you. Adam gave his whole kingdom up because of the woman. We would we will kill and die for you. And and the sex is the enjoyment. And that lasts in the old age. I'm seven. Let me, let me testify to that. Okay, we're seven. Let me testify. Um, <laughs> it's not, it doesn't end. It doesn't end when when you, who's laughing? What they're laughing? <laughs> I know I'm old. <laughs> I hear Lisa laughing too. Y'all stop teasing me. I'm <laughs> she'll tell you and everything. All right, Listen, Abraham. What's in this Abraham? <laughs> Kill the visual. Kill the visual. Kill the visual. I find me a Sarah. Okay, our next question is how does one know they are ready for marriage? to ensure harmony in um, their relationship or your relationship? I don't think you're ever married or ready for marriage. Uh, if you wait till you're ready for marriage, just, you're probably old and dried up by that time. You, you know, uh, you, <laughs> you know, that woman has to take your breath away. Uh, that mm. woman has to be something that, we don't get married. Men, men do not get married to have sex with you. We get married so nobody else will have sex with you. Mm. We find somebody, because we don't mind sharing you with the crowd. You know, community property. We don't mind that. Communal property. But we find something that's, that is not sexual. I know women think they got to be the best in bed. What happens in that case, you start dating, and women think, I like this guy. I better give him something, be really good at it. I better give him really, really. Because you think that men pick the best sex partner to marry. We do not pick the best sex partner. If we do, it's a coincidence. We pick some other quarters in you. Because uh, we know that getting married means less sex. Getting married means I can have three, four women. I, I can, <laughs> no, no, no. What? <laughs> you can't tell me to go from, from, from five to one is a good thing. It's not, <laughs> so we, we, don't, we don't expect more sex. We do expect better sex. We expect a mindset change with you. When I bring you just my wife, that means, that means we're a family. And that's really deeper because the man shall leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife, but his wife could bring her whole family with you in that wedding. She could be in the whole family <laughs> in the life. No, mama, daddy coming, Uncle Mary's coming. I don't like Uncle Billy, he's coming anyway. No, he could bring the whole, that's your family. Women keep their family. Men get rid of their family. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Teresa, how you doing? Welcome to the program. Hi, how are you? Good. <laughs> Have you Good been on? Here. What's that? You yes, I've, I, I have been on. Yes. Oh, good. Oh, great. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Our next question is define the role in marriage. God called women to be a help meet. What does this look like in today's society? 
Today's society is insane. It's gonna look crazy. <laughs> it's gonna look crazy. Because um the help I ain't doing help, nothing. Huh? <laughs> What's that? I ain't doing nothing, Mason. I ain't doing nothing. <laughs> no, I'm doing nothing. <laughs> I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get paid for it too. <laughs> I'm gonna sit there and look good. I'm talking about that. I'm gonna sit there and look good and tell that's you what it, I that's mean. It, that's it. And what you do, deliver to me. Yep, you're right. You know, it's uh, it's it's funny because we we tend to think that that it's all about love and affection, and it really isn't. Uh, read the question again to me, really slowly. Okay. Define the roles in marriage. God called women to be help me. Why do we have for a help me? Define the role. Doesn't God define the role pretty easily? He defined you are help me. You're helping me do something. I'm not helping you do something. You're coming to help me do something. And and men don't have any problems with we don't have any, you don't see men marching for equal rights. You don't see men marching for the go in the workplace. You don't see men trying to say, no, no, you need to cook for me, open the door for me. We're pretty, we're pretty comfortable. We get married, we, we, we settle in, we got it. Women want to, they, they I don't know, it, it seems like they want to participate in the man providing them what they want. And every female I know wants to be a queen. She keeps saying, I'm a queen, I'm a queen. No, you're not a queen. No, you're not a queen. A queen doesn't work and my dishes need washing. The queen doesn't do anything in the kitchen. She don't do anything with the kids. The queen is royalty. She is worshiped. She's honored. She's giving gifts. And she doesn't do anything in the home. A helpmate means you're going to help me with these kids. You're going to help me get this house together. You're going to help. The Proverbs 31 woman that every female thrives to be. The Proverbs 31 woman first was a wife. She was a wife. Amen. And everything she did brought Amen. honor to her husband and her children. She worked all over the place. She she worked day and night. You read the you read that 31, Proverbs 31. She was working night and day, early in the morning, get up doing something. That is a wife. That is not a queen. That's a wife. And she's in there with you, help build this family, help raise your kids in, in your honor under your name. I'm sorry, ladies, that's work. It's not wrong. It's so I'm just I'm just saying. Where just have wrong. we gone wrong? Why is that a issue today? We see more women in the workplace today. Yes, more women in the workplace and the kids are more crazy. Uh, why is the issue? Mm -hmm. Always women have been in rebellion. They're not rebelling against man. Uh, you're fighting man over the submit thing. That's not man. Man has never demanded you submit to them. Man has never demanded you that you be on it. It's not because we're smarter or bigger or taller or wiser. It is part of your punishment from God because of, of the sin in the garden. It is your punishment. So. He shall rule you. Doesn't mean he could rule you. If, if he acting right, you can take over. It means that that's your punishment. And you're fighting man over your punishment when you're really the argument is God. Because we were never given that, that ability to rule you. We were never given the wisdom. We don't have the authority. So we have a job to do that we have no power to do. We have, we have a task to command. We have no control of what we have. But if our kingdom fall apart, we'd be cursed. We'll be dishonored. We'll be harmed by God. So you have to, you have the ability to cause me harm with my God because you don't want to obey what God said, and I can't make you do nothing. It's very hard to uh, for a man to be in a marriage with a woman who all the time be served, serve, 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 serve. Um, I'm a little <laughs> confused about that. I mean, I thought that that I got a job to do, and you're helping me do my job. Uh, Adam said that woman you brought with me. You know, he said basically. Man, well, just you and me, God, I wasn't in trouble. And I got that girl here, now I'm in trouble. I'm just trying to, what can I do? Now, don't get me wrong. Man sin. It was man oh, sin who got kicked out the garden. Because only a king can, can, can lose his kingdom. So only I can lose my kingdom. And only Mr. Jeffries can lose his kingdom. <laughs> I'm terrible I said that. <laughs> okay. Can women know their men are cheating? What are the signs? Oh, come on, ladies. You know, you always come on. You know, you know. You know, you know the man's cheating. You no. know. You go. No. Is anybody, any women, women on this call do not know their man is cheating? Number one. This is for the up and coming women. This is for women up and coming. Uh -huh, they know too. <laughs> 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 they know too. 
ladies, let's, let's okay. get raunchy for a second. Yeah. This, this is the raunchy the side of the, of the movie. This is the raunchy side of the program. Let's get raunchy. You know, women have a very, very, very good sense of smell. And let's take it for a second. You got a very good sense of smell. You cook from Absolutely. smell, you shop from smell. You can tell the best fruit by the sniffing at it. You know smell. So if your husband comes home, smell like Susie made down the street. You know it at the front door. You know it at the front door. You're not fooling nobody by it. You ignore it. You ignore it, but you know, you know. I mean, here's no. your big, strong, healthy man working hard from his job. He's tough and rough. He comes home smelling like sweaty man up here. And then down there, it smells like ivy soap. Something wrong, you know something wrong. You know something wrong. Now, now what you do, what you know, you can you can do a couple of things with that. You can, you can confront him and argue and fight and 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 push him back out there where he's going, or you can forgive him, which is biblical, and, and find out what is lacking in his life, and so that you can provide that for him. Uh, we, we don't cheat. Men don't cheat for lack of food. We cheat for a different type of food. But we're crazy. You know, we we are driven by emotions. We don't love the same way you love. Or we don't cater the same way you cater. And we have to, we have to be uh, inspired to stay on that path. We have to be inspired. And you do that mostly with your words, not with your body. You convince that guy that you need him to breathe. Because don't forget, ladies, he married wow. you. He married you. You have to convince him you need him for breath, for your air, for your energy, for your health. I am healthier when you're with me. I'm safer when you're here with me. Uh, I may be sick. I don't feel like talking to me. I don't feel like being touched, but I still need you in my presence. You get what you praise. Wow. You get what you praise. I'm telling you, you are, you are in a whole lot of dynamic activity in your home if you praise that man that God gave you. You get rid of a whole lot of what activity? Dynamic Demonic. activity in your home. So Satan wants you and him to fight. God wants you and him to love. Right, right, so right. Therefore, the more loving, the less fighting. <laughs> the That's less, good, Mason. Less That's really just, good. You know, not just pray with them, praise him. And men, we always have two choices. You want, do you want your man, ladies, do you want your man to pray over you or to pray on you? You got to have, you got to pick which one you want. <laughs> and you get the one you praise. You know, you tell that man how his touch affects you. You call him in the day and say, boy, I miss you. I, I, just, I just want to just spend some time with you tonight. That, that's, that's just, that motivates us to rush home. You want your man to rush home. We stopped at a bar, something wrong. If we stop him to see his buddy, something wrong. If we stop him to go and, and shop, men don't shop, something's wrong. You got you to do that with a touch. You got to put your hands on him. I don't mean sexually. See, see your body, that's why men get real nervous if you stand close to them. You stand within six inches of a man, he gets nervous. I, I, that's my space. And But if you, his woman, stay within, within a, a six inches, you are one with him. You are one with him. And he's going he's gonna to enjoy your, the warmth from your body. He doesn't know what he enjoys. But when you leave, he's going to miss something. That's the warmth of your body. So when you're in the car, wow. touch your man. Lean toward him in the car. Don't lean over here by the window. Lean toward him in the car. Put your hands gently on him. I don't mean rub him. I don't mean get him all excited. I mean, just touch him. Just put your hands and let your heat from your hands soak into his body. Don't rub him. Don't pat him. Put your hands on that dude. And when you're not with him, he misses something. He doesn't know what it is. <laughs> it's your touch. He doesn't know what it is. Uh oh, it's not laughing in the corner with yeah. that. <laughs> smile. It's true. It's true. Ladies, you, you'll be stunned <laughs> to know how much power is in your hands. You'll be stunned. Get your body within, get your body close enough to him, so close that only you can get that close to him. Only you can get that close to him. If you do that, ladies, he he won't know why he misses you, but he cannot be out of your presence. That's the power you have, but you don't use it because you're too busy doing this, doing that. Don't don't spend you you should not ever spend more time on your hair than you touching your man. But what you're saying to him, you're saying to him, I'm getting pretty to go out here to impress other men. When I come home, what? I'm going to just, just, you know, no. No, don't, don't ever tell your man, I go to the gym for me. No, ma'am, you go to the gym for me. <laughs> don't, don't, tell, <laughs> don't tell me you're getting your hair done so you look good to go see with your girlfriend shopping. Do not say that to me. 
Det var fedt. Og så bare hit the fellas out. Vi bare hit the fellas out. Så so, 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 all that hair and all that body is mine. It, I just I just let you keep it so you have something to hold your clothes up on. But just this 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 is mine. So don't be telling me about about and you spend my money to go out to the gym. Now, now what I'm saying is this. If, think about it, ladies from us. We really like your body. So you're saying to us that we can see them in flannel nightgowns and uh, ready house shoes and the old blouse and the old, and then you get up in the morning and get dressed up, put on makeup, put on your hair, put on the nylon stock and go see the dude at work called your boss. And you come home and take all oh, the pretty no. stuff off and, and show me the sideshow and I'm supposed to be happy about that situation. No, no. Every, every man on that street to see you down the street, every man that watches you at work, see things I don't see when you get home because you put them in the old ragged behind clothes. No, I'm sorry. Your body is my only source of pleasure. So we could just, just see prepare really your good. body for the king, not for the job. Prepare yourself for me. That's ego. Oh, this is a lot of homework. That's, a lot of homework, Mason. This is a lot of homework. Just, just, just homework. Just surrender. You're natural, girl. Come on. You're a woman. You do this naturally. You want to be beautiful, but be beautiful for your man. Just, just, that's our rule. Okay. Or at least act like you're being beautiful. Right. Just, we don't mind your lying. Just act like we just, just. <laughs> You don't mind if we laugh. You don't mind? Look, look, ladies, ladies, ladies. Let's, let's understand something. You know we don't mind fake. You can fake it, and we don't mind you faking it. We don't mind you faking it. We know it's not your hair. We know it's not your real legs. We don't know how your shoes make your behind still a little higher up. We know, we know it's all fake. The eyelashes are fake. They ain't your real lips. We know that. We don't mind, because the effort, we like the effort. You try to, girl, we just, we just like the effort. It ain't got to be true. We know it's not true. We know all this fake. We know that we don't care. We don't care if it's fake breast or real breast. We don't care. We don't care. We just want to be our breast. That's right. Uh, Mr. Teresa, did you have a comment? You're welcome to ask a question that maybe we didn't touch. I did. I did. It's actually Theresa. Theresa. I know it's different. Different name. We, That's OK. Um, cut off in a little bit. We have six minutes left, seven minutes left. So. Keep that in mind. Go ahead, dear. There's a lot. I love what was said about the Proverbs 31 woman, but it seems, well, I wanted to get your thoughts on how our women are preparing for marriage. Their, their focus area um, seems like a lot of women spend a lot of time trying to get beautiful. They know how to get their nails done, hair done, but when it comes to domestic skills, it seems like they don't have a clue. There's some way of uh, could you break down some of the things that the Proverbs 31 woman actually does for those that don't read the word? Everything she did was for her husband. Uh, she prepared herself for her husband. She gave honor. She raised the kids right. She worked hard in the field. She she demonstrated her love for her husband. She brought all the honor to him. He sat in the high place at the, at the, at the gate of the temple. Elders respected him because of her activities. And that's the problem we have today. We don't have that that self-sacrifice for each other that we had before. Women get beautiful and that's enough. I'm pretty, I'm pretty, but you're pretty for your girlfriends and the boss down the street. You're not pretty for me. I can't mess your hair up. You know, I can't, you know, why have a female with beautiful hair and you can't get in the shower with her? Can't mess up my hair. I beg your pardon? <laughs> We're gonna mess the hair up today, I'm sorry. So, so a woman has to understand who you are. Your body is the most, the only source of pleasure that we have. It, that's it. That's the, there is no other pleasure a man has. We like the kids, we like the, the job, we like your sister, we like your mama, we got all that, but no, no, you are the only source of real, absolute pleasure in our lives. So make sure it's important that you, I mean, make sure that, that we are allowed to enjoy what God had formed. God formed Eve, he formed Eve. So what women can do to prepare themselves for their husband. I would suggest that every day we get that bed, you make that bed up. Say, my husband's gonna like these new sheets. When you get in the shower and wash your body, say, he's gonna like this, this soap I'm using today. When you oil your body up, think about the goodness of your husband when he touches your body. When you put on your underwear, say, he's gonna like these. He's gonna, like, it's all for him. Your clothes, your makeup is for the goodness of your husband. And if he knows that all that's for him, then he'd be all for you. And he'd be your husband. But if, you got, if he had to compete with Susie May and and the girl down the street and your girlfriends and your, and your boss and all, and, and you want attention. If you want attention, you will get attention, ladies, but you will not get retention. 
You get notice, but you want to be kept. Oh, you, want be, you, you, you want retention. That's the same, but you want retention. Retention. Not attention, but retention. That's good, Mason. That's good. good. So if I may, um, since we're four minutes left, Mason, those were really good points, especially within a marriage. Um, but I'll tie in what the rest of was talking about. And when we're preparing for our husband, that means while dating, uh, we can't be in the man's space, all in his space and touching him and being real close like we would be in a marriage. So I think next time we need to probably spend some time talking about what's the proper way to approach this to be man or husband or wife, or even before that, the well, dating stages. What's the are, appropriate? If you're up close to the man, it's not sexual to the man. You don't want to be sexual. You don't want to put your hands on him sexually. You want to just lay your hands. When you're driving a car, lay your hands on his knee, not his thigh. And ladies, you don't know the difference. Get a book. <laughs> Get a book. We want... <laughs> to be in his presence within six inches. His mama can't stand that close to him. His mama can't stand six inches from him. His, his buddy, his buddies can't stand that close to him. No other creature on planet Earth, maybe his dog can, but you're the only creature, so stay in his presence. Don't touch him. That gives that a, different, that a different mindset. That changes mindset. Be close to him. Let him feel the heat of your body. He will not know what's affecting him, but he will know when, you, when you're gone, he feels cold. He feels un, untouched. He feels lonely. If you're out of his presence, if, if you drive in that man's car, every time you're in that car, you got your hands, just, just, just lay your hands on him, on his forearm, on his knee. Keep it, that's your heat. Woman, that's, that's uniquely yours. Now you can tell smells, we can tell animals. We know animals, we're hunters. So if you are, if you are a, 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 a body next to me, I know my body from somebody else's body. I know the heat, your heat is different. The fragrance is different. So make sure that, that he gets that and not the folks at work or on the bus or in the cab. You know, just bring that. That's mine. Bring it home to me. Just, you know, I'm selfish. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm egotistical and I want mine for me. You do that, that's you got, you got, you got what's going to happen in the marriage. Folks, we're out, we're out, of, we're out of time now. We're going to be cut off in a second. Uh, we're going to we open up to the public this time a little bit more. We got to decide we're going to keep this um, Zoom. We may go somewhere else with this this program. But I thank you guys for all your help. Your, your, your questions are great. You. You're pulling out of me. Yeah. Before the book comes out, we may even have an event somewhere. to invite you out with your husbands and we're going to celebrate Valentine's Day the right way. We're going to find a hotel and we're going to rock the hotel all weekend. We're going to have some you know, lovers like that, acting crazy. All of it's going to be maybe in Texas with you, maybe in, maybe in uh, Illinois, it could be, I don't know, someplace, maybe Denver. You know, you got enough room there. Uh, Lisa, keep us. Yes. Yes. Yeah, she, yeah. yeah, she went about it with her husband. She got a husband. You ain't got no, you want to come see her. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, I appreciate it. God bless you guys. I think we have this thing recorded now, so we have a copy. We did not record last week. It was my fault. I saw it recorded. It wasn't really recorded. So God bless you guys. Stay right or be left. Eternity is a long time to be wrong. And enjoy your marriages. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye.